on paper, the Insta360 GO 3 really can't compete with the GoPro 12 or even the DJI Action 4. However, maybe that's not the point of it. You see, it lacks 4K video recording, an interchangeable battery, micro SD card slot compatibility, the list goes on and on. But if you take a second to look at the camera, you might realize that this camera is kind of like the Nintendo Switch of action cameras. Like Insta360 decided, hey, maybe we should do something different rather than try to beat everyone else at the same game. And that's how you got the Insta360. The Insta360, hold on, the Insta360 GO 3. That's better. Hi, my name's Gabe at Digital Tech Reviews and Tips here. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the three reasons why I think you should get the Insta360 GO 3, some of the unique characteristics of this camera, and of course, in the end, the three things I don't like about this camera, because it's not always rosy tinted glasses here at Digital Tech Reviews and Tips. So without further ado though, let's get into the video. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the three reasons why I think someone should get an Insta360 GO 3 as opposed to like a GoPro or DJI action camera. So, oh, just note also, I am filming this currently on the Insta360 GO 3, but using a lav mic for a little better audio quality. So number one reason is if you're a casual user, like true, this camera doesn't have 4K resolution, but in this case, it's actually a positive thing because I've seen a lot of people pick up a GoPro or DJI action camera go on a vacation, you know, set it to like the highest setting because has it, why not use it? And they get back with like 200 gigabytes of footage and don't really know what to do with it because if you're just looking at editing it, you know, on your phone, that's a lot of space to take up. So they just throw it in a corner and then next trip comes along and oh crap, they haven't really done anything with that footage. So, oh well, whatever, they just delete it and then go film another trip. And like, if that's what's happening to all the footage why are you even filming? So the fact that it doesn't have, you know, anything above 4K kind of actually a benefit because your file sizes are smaller. It's quicker and easier to edit on your phone. You know, you just go into the Insta360 app. I don't know, choose a couple shots, boom, 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 edit done, export to your phone, share it on social media. And yeah, it's just a lot simpler. I also think this camera has a nice easy design. The front, you know, flip up screen is great for vlogging like this. So in a lot of ways, this is a cool camera to have if you're just a casual user, it's not very big, fits in a pocket, stuff like that. Number two, uh, if you're more of like a wanting to be influencer type person, you know, you like to post about your activities on social media, but you don't have enough followers or make enough money to like hire a professional videographer. Maybe you're trying to get a boyfriend or girlfriend uh, so you can convince them to do that. But yeah, you don't have that at the moment. So you can actually use this camera in a lot of ways like that, you know, set it up on the side, do a time lapse or, you know, get another shot of you doing something to be able to, you know, post a second angle uh, and, you know, edit better into a final video. You can use it as POV camera, right? You know, maybe you're driving a car, I don't know, biking, doing something where it'd be cool to have your point of view. You can use this camera because it's just so small, stick it on your hat, stick it on your chest, etc. It's out of the way, you don't have to worry about it. And also it kind of blends in better to like, you know, your everyday life sort of thing. Like I brought this to a cafe and no one really, you know, gave it a second look. Whereas if I had like my professional mirrorless camera or a GoPro or the DJI Action 4, they'd kind of be a little bit more leery walking around it because they think, oh, per this person's a professional, they're filming, I gotta be careful. Oh, maybe they will ask you not to film, I don't know. Stuff like that happens because those cameras look more professional and attract a little bit more attention that you might be a professional. Where this thing, for better or worse, kind of just looks like a fun toy. And yeah, they don't give you a, you know any trouble for using it anywhere like around other people. So that's the second reason. Number three is if you're professional, you might be counting this camera off saying, yeah, you know, specs are terrible. If it doesn't have 4K, I don't even like, I don't even pay attention to it, right? Like you're too good for it. And yeah, sure, if that's your attitude, maybe this isn't the camera for you. But if you're looking for something that can really get unique angles, uh, because that is something that can help you stand out among other videographers and filmmakers is, you know, even just a one second clip from this camera that has like a really unique angle that no one's seen before, that could help your video, you know, rise to the top. So if you're a professional, semi-professional making stuff for the web or social media, then this camera might be worth taking a look at, especially if you've kind of like 
you know, given GoPro that, all right, I've used those, there's no more I can get out of them sort of thing. And this might help you reinvent your filmmaking and come up with new creative ways to use a small camera. So yeah, those are the three ways which I think this camera could potentially be useful to someone uh, as opposed to a GoPro or DJI Action 4. Now let's get on to the part where I talk about all the bad things because there are a few bad things. <laughs> all right, maybe that's the thumbnail, I don't know. Anyways, the obligatory camera in mouth shot now complete. I can take the sunglasses off to get real because we're gonna be talking about the three things that I don't really like about this camera. Because even though Insta360 did send this to me, they didn't really say that I couldn't say what I wanted to say about it, so here we are. First thing that's really annoyed me about this camera is the fact that the record button on the camera is, well, there isn't really one. Like, you may notice it's, it's a super sleek design, I'll give them that. Uh, and you know, they didn't have a physical button on here to maybe add extra weight, but because all you do is that, like, did, did you see that? that? That, that was barely anything. Like my fingers barely moved. Now the camera's recording or not recording. Who knows? Because it's far too easy to like be holding this camera and accidentally click record or stop recording when you didn't mean to. And then as a result, you have, I don't know, 20 minutes of footage of your pocket, or maybe you don't have footage of that really cool moment you thought you had footage of. Hopefully Insta360, you're watching this, you can send this to your engineers, software developers, just like literally make it so that, boom, you double click, and that's how you start or stop recording. Uh, because just a single click is far too easy to hit when you don't mean it. So. That's my first complaint and kind of just request for Insta360. Number two is something that probably can't be fixed and that is the photo quality that you get with this camera or can I say lack of quality? Because as you may notice, if you look at like the marketing materials by Insta360 or even like the video I put together myself showing off this camera versus the GoPro 11, there's not a lot about the photos and that's because the photo quality isn't great i think this has like 6.5 megapixels i figured out myself by looking at the resolution like they don't advertise that online because even by like budget smartphone standards that's pretty low if you were getting this camera just for photography it would be a really big issue so that's why i'm mentioning it but really most people are looking at this camera for like a video action camera filming type camera and in that case like the 2.7K resolution is plenty of enough. You don't have to worry about it. And the video quality is fine, as you can tell from like the shots I've included in this video. Now, the third bad thing about this camera, well, actually there's two more things, but they're both small, so I'm gonna make it two and a half and three, is number one, the fact that this action pod, yeah, it's really cool, right? Like camera just goes right in, adds extra charge. Uh, and the big thing, right, that a lot of people probably are like, oh, that's so cool, is you can see wirelessly like what the camera is seeing, right? So you can look at that and you can see, I mean, true, there's a little delay, but yeah, you can monitor what the camera is looking at. Um, and so you can put this, you know, places and monitor that it's getting the shot you want without having to like, I don't know, double check that the camera lens is facing the right way or even without using your phone because most, you know, action cameras make you use your phone. So this potentially like, that's a really cool option that you have this, uh, as like a little, you know, director's viewing thing that you can monitor your shot. But the problem is that the range is not great. Let's just say like on the website, Insta360 advertises 16 feet, I think, which that's a respectable distance. I mean, most like smartphone connections with cameras is usually in like 30 foot range, maybe 40 foot. Uh, so 16 feet, not great, but still, okay, fine. I can work with that. Uh, but in practice, I have found that it's often more like eight feet, maybe five feet. Uh, really all that has to happen is, you know, when you take the camera out, if something goes in between the action pod and the camera, you can pretty much guarantee that it's gonna like drop a signal or at least like kind of freeze up a little bit. I mean, even here, you can probably see as if I go on the other side of me there, it kind of like just gets laggy and, you know, falls apart. So yeah, I don't think this is gonna affect most people, but if you were like, I don't know, I need this camera to be exactly 16 feet away from me and that's how I can monitor it and use it to, I don't know, do a prank videos on people or stuff like that. Like, 
uh, you're gonna be disappointed probably, but you can always just connect your smartphone and that does give a little better range. Three, finally, the final thing is something more with just Insta360 cameras in general. If you don't know, one of the benefits of them is the fact that you can kind of reframe and, you know, if it's 360 camera, even like get a completely different shot uh, with the camera in post or in the case of the Go 3, you can get like a vertical shot and then, you know, also crop it for horizontal. However, this means that you are having to kind of do an extra step before you start editing your video in your final video. So in my case, like say I filmed, I don't know, 20 clips with this camera uh, while I'm out filming this review video, I'll have to then take those clips and often one by one go into Insta360 Studio, you know, choose the video portion that I want. All right, what resolution? All right, export bulk. All right, no bulk option really. Uh, and then shoot it out and export it. And it's not the end of the world, it's not terrible, but it does kind of make the workflow with this camera a bit more tedious and makes you at least not want to use that reframing option or the free frame video, they call it, where you can do vertical and horizontal and instead just shoot in the 2.7K uh, option where you just shoot like this and only have the 16 by nine option or vertical if you shoot vertical and can't crop it in post. So yeah, I don't know if they could change that to where it shoots and produces an MP4 that's both vertical and then also a circular one, but something to note if you were thinking about using this camera uh, in your workflow versus just like for fun clips here and there. But anyways, that is pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you are still watching, thank you very much for making it all the way through the video. Click like, subscribe, comment. I don't know, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You guys are professional video watchers. You know how to interact with this video. I do have affiliate links and social media links down in the description. So if you wanna help me out in any way, click through on one of those. Uh, and also, if you do have any questions, I will try to answer them as soon as possible. So go leave those down in the comment section down below and I'll try to get back to you or maybe even another user will try to help you out as soon as they can. So anyways, that is it for today's video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out and as always, have a nice day. Bye.